Good morning and welcome to our online worship today. As always, it is really great to be here with you. Please don't forget to connect with us through the chat facilities on both Facebook and YouTube. It is so, so important that when we can't meet together in person, that we remember that we are still that strong community together. So drop us a hello in the comments section and don't forget you can also pop us an email over to hello at southchadmethodist.org.uk. Before we get started this morning, let's just pause for a moment and reflect on why it is that we're here.
In the words of Psalm 95, Come, let's shout praises to God. Raise the roof for the rock who saved us. Let's march into his presence singing praises, lifting the rafters with our hymns. And why? Because God is the best, high king over all the gods. In one hand he holds deep caves and caverns, and in the other hand grasps the high mountains. He made the oceans, he owns it. His hands sculpted earth. So come, let us worship. Bow before him, on your knees before God, who made us. Yes, he's our God, and we're the people he pastures, the flock he feeds. Lord Jesus, almighty, powerful, loving Father and Shepherd, we bring ourselves humbly before you now and welcome your presence with us. Thank you, Lord, that you join with us as we meet together today, accepting us just as we are. And we pray that you'll prepare our hearts for what you want us to hear. Take away those distractions that plague our minds, Lord, so that we may focus on you as we humbly await what you have to say to us today. In your holy name. Amen. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come. We're gathered together to lift up your name, to call on our Saviour, to fall on your grace in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit, Lord, we come, we're gathered together to lift up your name, to come on our Saviour, to fall on your grace. Hear the joyful sound of our offering as your saints bow down.
the ocean, loving kindness as the flood. When the prince of life arrives him, shed for us his precious blood. Who his love will not remember, who can cease to sing his praise, he can never be forgotten. Sybil Lamb, I'm one of the uh, leadership team at South Charleston. Let's come with our prayers now. Lord God, we want to thank you that we are able to join in our worship of you. You're almighty and majestic, throned in splendour and light. We can only bow humbly before you as we acknowledge our sinfulness and poverty. Yet we praise you for your amazing love poured out on us bringing us your grace and forgiveness through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Thank you for your fatherly care for each of us, for your wonderful provision, your sustaining power. Encourage us now in our fellowship. Challenge us by your word. Accept our faltering praise and prayer. Bless this time and be with us in a special way through your Holy Spirit so that even though we're apart and we're using technology, we may feel your presence and love be joined in you, in and through your son, Jesus. We give you praise and honour to your holy name. Amen. God is good. 
God is good, where is His grace and goodness known? In our great Redeemer's blood, who holds our faith when fears arise, who stands above the storm of trial, who sends the waves that bring us nigh unto the shore. Thank you. 
to our prayers of intercession as we think of others. Lord Jesus, who welcomed little ones, gave them time and blessing, who said we all needed to be like children in our trust and dependence. We come now with our prayers, especially for children. We lift to you now our children and grandchildren and all those others in our country, especially as they return to school. We know how much they've been through in this last year, the effect it's had on all of them, their lives. We ask for your protection, keep them safe as they go back into school. But we thank you that they'll be able to meet with friends, take part in other activities again. Please bless them. We pray especially for those for whom it's been hardest those with family problems, isolation, maybe feelings of lostness and anger. Please encourage them, work in their hearts and lives to bring peace and recovery. We pray for parents and carers. We pray for teachers and school staff as they seek to work out how to alter the gaps and bring about well-being and learning for each child. Give them wisdom and understanding. We pray too for other professionals, social workers and others involved in children's well-being, that you will just be with them in that work too. Then Lord, we want to pray for the children of our church. We ask that you will just make up to them for all that they've missed, enabling them to learn more of you, knowing your love and care. We pray for those children's activities that have had to stop at church and we pray for uh, the leaders of the organisations like Kids Works, Tots Time, the Brigades, that you will give the leaders wisdom as they work out if and when and how to restart. Then Lord, we want to pray for children throughout the world. We know that there are so many areas where there is suffering, violence, famine, war, civil war, and Lord, you must just be weeping for those children that are caught up in those areas. We pray for those who are refugees, those who are feeling lost, the wounded and the injured. We pray that you will just be with them as they go through all of that. But may people realise what they're doing to these young lives and let them live in peace, knowing love and respect in place of all the suffering that they've had. Please bring them healing, homes and safety. Restore them with nutrition, education, medical care. Then, Lord, lastly, we want to pray for our church. Things have been so strange over these months. We do thank you for those who've been working in various areas to bring about uh, all that's needed to be done to maintain our fellowship, our care for each other. People who've been involved in pastoral care, in preparing services, whether online or in church, for those in various, carrying out various practical tasks, there are so many, many working quietly and unobserved. 
as these things will obviously be going on for some months yet, we pray that you will bring them refreshment and encourage them in that work. Lord, we long for our witness to our community and for others around us to be renewed, to be strengthened, that folk might be reached with your wonderful gospel, brought into faith and discipleship. We recognise that things are going to be different, so we pray that you will renew our vision for all that you want to do through the church. Just guide us in all that you want for us and for those who we are reaching. Be with Adrian and the leadership team as we seek a new way forward. As there may be changes in leadership, we pray that you will raise up those you are calling to move the church forward under your direction. Help us to accept change, to see the new ways you want us to walk in. We know too that there will be a need for decisions to be made by the church and individuals in coming months. Help us to make these in accordance with your will and your word and to keep our ties of love and fellowship, whatever comes and however things change, knowing that you are sovereign and you will act in bringing about your purposes for each of us. May our frailties and ignorance not hinder the work of the gospel in the lives of others, in reaching our community with your glorious grace and love. Lord, we ask all this in the power of your Holy Spirit, that your kingdom might be established. Let's say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Show me who you 
Today's reading is taken from Exodus, chapter 20, verses 1 to 17, the Ten Commandments. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or in the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of their parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labour and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall do no work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your town. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honour your father and your mother so that you may Live long in the land the Lord your God is giving to you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbour. You shall not covet your neighbour's house. You shall not covet your neighbour's wife or his male or female servant or his ox or donkey. Or anything that belongs to your neighbour. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be worthy of you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. The Ten Commandments provided and continue to provide for God's people a framework that allows them to love one another, respect one another, care for one another as well as honouring God. I've often reflected on why God gave these commandments. And I realised the importance of remembering where the Israelites had resided before this point in order to fully understand the rationale behind the commandments. The Israelites had escaped Egypt through the Red Sea. they travelled through the wilderness, the desert. They'd arrived at Sinai the holy mountain of God. In Egypt there had been many different idols and gods with each god representing a different part of life and to obtain as many blessings as possible it was not unusual to worship them all. To ask the Israelites to worship Yahweh the God was not an issue. What difference would one more god make? But when Yahweh commands the Israelites that they shall worship only him and no other gods, then that becomes a big deal. I wonder, what are our modern day gods and idols? Money? Possessions? How many followers we have on social media? What or who distracts us from keeping God at the centre of all that we say and do in our lives? In some parts of society, there are people who would claim to be spiritual but not religious. There are people who turn away from organised religion have nothing to do with church. But have you ever heard of someone who is religious but not spiritual? For those of us in the church world, it's easy to assume that if somebody goes through the motions, attending church, serving on committees, giving huge donations, then surely they must be spiritual. What's the difference anyway between being religious and spiritual? Have you ever thought about it? Many would suggest that being religious has more to do with the external trappings of institutional affiliation and assent to a set of beliefs, such as the creeds. Spirituality, on the other hand, is about our experience of self-transcendence, belonging, connection, connection with God. 
spirituality is about relationship. Among all of the seasons in our church, Lent is probably the one that is most focused on our personal experience. We aim to clear away the debris that blocks that loving connection with God, with one another, and open ourselves to the encounters with the divine through prayer and saturation in the scriptures. Lenten disciplines, we sometimes call them, and despite their stern sounding names, they're more about spirituality than about religion. Self-examination and repentance, changing hearts and minds, prayer, fasting, self-denial, reading, meditating God's word. All of these pathways towards a relationship with the liberating, loving and life-giving God, friendship with those on a similar pilgrimage. But here we are in the middle of this 40-day spiritual pilgrimage. We are asked to wrestle with something that might conjure up images of religion at its worst. The Ten Commandments, litigation, laws, regulations, binding up with expectations. Sometimes used to exclude the litmus test for whether some people are welcome or not not always a positive image but today's reading from exodus presents us with an invitation an invitation to reclaim the ten commandments not as a tool for judgment and shame but instead as a set of teachings that guide us into life-giving spirituality the teachings figuratively create for us a space for those experiences we are made to long for transcendence, belonging, connection. In God I live and move and have my being. The Ten Commandments lay a foundation for spirituality that blossoms out of religion, for encounter to emerge from rule, for transcendence to arise from tradition. Teachings provide for a foundation for this spirituality in, I think, three ways. First, we realise that we worship a God whose desire for our well-being transcends our small-mindedness, resistance, selfishness. The very first commandment, you shall have no other God before me. But those words have a preface. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Not an optional preface, it's a necessary prologue that frames the intention of all that follows. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. You will not have any other gods before me. The Lord who yearns for us to abide by the teaching is the same God who heard our cry in Egypt and is committed to liberating us from every kind of captivity. And this Lord has demonstrated power in real time by intervening to rescue the oppressed. The Lord is the one who went to the mat with Pharaoh and all Pharaohs since that first one in order to liberate God's people. The Lord is the one who provides for us even when we resist that generosity, who made water spring from a rock, who provided manna and quail in the wilderness. That is the one before whom we should have no other gods. The Lord is eager to encounter us and put our finitude and weakness into the external context of liberating love. The second through to the fifth of the teachings is about not making or worshipping gods other than the Lord about revering God's name, not using it in vain or in attempts to control God. Resting with our creaturely and human natures on the Sabbath, just like God did after creating us. Honouring our parents so that our days may be long in the land. All about connection. You can almost think of these teachings as the umbilical cord, tethering us to what nourishes us, energises us, so that we can discern and accomplish God's purposes for our lives. Our culture doesn't talk much about idols, but if we we're honest, all of us could name things that compete for our attention, our allegiance, suck up our resources, 
football, sports, alcohol, social media, investment accounts, these things that are not bad in themselves, but easily take up so much space that they cried out our ability to be spiritual people. Squeeze out our ability to care for our communities. Squeeze out our time for relationship with God. It is as though we have a limited number of portals for connection and if each of these takes up a connection where do we then plug in that nourishing life-giving flow of God's love? The teaching about Sabbath rest is an astounding gift for us if we slow down enough to receive it. When we rest we practice being in the promised land. We put our worries, fears, anxieties in the metaphorical parking lot and are invited to trust that God will attend to them whilst we are simply being rather than fretting about them. Can you imagine how our friendships would deepen if we just rested together, if we spent time playing together, enjoying one another's company, telling stories, sharing food? Fellowship is important and we miss it so much during this pandemic. The command to rest at its best is the command to enjoy, to focus on the enoughness of what God has given, the space to breathe, to receive the nourishment that God has prepared. And thirdly, the final five teachings are all about belonging. Wouldn't it be impossible to sense a feeling of being safe if you didn't feel you belonged and would it not be impossible to feel a sense of belonging if you didn't feel safe in the place you were if you were always worried about staying physically safe someone stealing your cattle your car your social security number seducing your spouse lying about you viewing your property with an eye to acquiring it wouldn't be good Trust is the foundation for any sense of belonging and it's important that we can trust and feel safe in the community. That is crucial to our well-being and our sense of purpose. Over the course of 2020 and 21, we have had to adapt and react to new and ever-changing rules, regulations, laws as the result of this very unpredictable COVID virus. And while there are some who have been very outspoken about the laws and regulations, the majority of us have conformed to them in the name of safety and out of love and respect for those around us, family, friends, neighbours or even strangers. When we look at the Ten Commandments through this lens, and through the context in which God gave them to us, we can see that they are laws given in love, not as a means of control or oppression. Rather, as we read in the Psalms, a means of promoting revival, wisdom, joy, light. Why not take a little bit of time to think about the rules that we observe in daily life, on the streets, in the places we work or learn? Why are such rules there? What would the place look like without them? The Ten Commandments were supplemented by Jesus by two more. We can read about that in Matthew chapter 22. Remember how Jesus reacted in the cleansing of the temple when he saw people disrespecting God, focusing more upon trade than worship. Think about those laws and those regulations we follow and how for some people they are a challenge just as the whole message of the gospel is a challenge. The cross for some is an act of foolishness. The laws of living are acts of oppression. Instead, offer a message that shows how God loves us enough to set caring and life-giving boundaries even loves us enough to send Jesus to demonstrate that God's love is eternal. And even when we break the rules and go off course, God is willing to go to the ends of the earth to show to all who accepted the gracious gift of God 
that there is forgiveness from the cross. During the season of Lent, many churches begin Sunday worship with the Litany of Penitence. The officiant recites each commandment to which the people respond with a prayer for God's mercy, implying rightly that they have failed to abide perfectly by the commandments. We all fail at some point. But maybe the next time you hear them, you'll remember the deepest purpose isn't to induce guilt, to serve as a litmus test for true Christian spirit. Rather, they are to guide us into genuine spirituality that God wants for us and with us, self-transcendence, connection, belonging. The commandments enable us to connect with one another and with God, to live the life of fullness that God offers us and continues to offer us in Jesus Christ. But maybe the psalmist puts it better. The law of the Lord is much to be desired, more than fine gold, much more than fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. Who doesn't want to taste that sweetness? Taste and see that the Lord is good.
Let us come together in prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for this time of sharing today. Thank you for the words that have been spoken and the worship shared. And Lord, as we bring this service to a close and we prepare to move on with our day, help us to continue to ponder and reflect on your words. We pray that as we go on with our week, that you will remind each one of us that you continue to walk closely with us throughout our daily lives. And let us close by joining together in the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, evermore. Amen.